Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss two power series. We will find the radius of convergence, interval of convergence, and set S. So S is a set of real numbers for which the given power series is convergent. Okay. So let us start with this power series. So let me mention here. I will compare this power series with a standard power series. So this is standard power series. The multiple of x raised to n is c n. So here multiple of x raised to n is one by n. So that's why our c n is one by n. Okay. So basically radius of convergence we denote by r and its formula is one by alpha. So here alpha can be calculated in two different ways. The first way is limit. n tends to infinity supremum of mod c n raised to one by n. Okay, so in this way we can find the value of alpha. There is one more way to calculate alpha, which is alpha is equal to limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus one upon c n. So this is second formula to calculate value of alpha, right? Generally, when we have the power n, then we go for the first formula. Otherwise, we go for the second formula. So here we don't have any power n. So obviously, I will go for the second formula. In second formula, c n plus one is also required. So let us calculate c n plus one. It can be easily obtained just by replacing n by n plus one. So we will have one upon n plus one. So right now we have both c n and c n plus one. Let us use the formula to calculate alpha. Then. The formula of alpha is limit n tends to infinity mod c n plus one upon c n. Okay, now I am going to put the values. We have some space. Let us use. So this is equal to limit n tends to infinity mod. But see, mod is not required since both values are positive. So I am putting the value of c n plus one, which is one upon n plus one. And the value of c n is one by n. So here n is in denominator of denominator. So it will go to the numerator. It will be limit n tends to infinity n upon n plus one. So to find the value of limit, what will I do? I will divide numerator and denominator by n. Since highest power of n is one, so that's why I'm dividing numerator denominator by n. So let us see what will happen. Dividing numerator by n, dividing denominator by n. Okay, so this is equal to limit n tends to infinity. N n will get cancelled. One here I will divide separately. So one plus one by n. So now I am applying the limit. Numerator is constant one. One plus. If you apply the limit n tends to infinity, its value will be zero, since one upon infinity is zero. So final value is. One. So in this way, I got the value of alpha. But we have to find the uh, radius of convergence, whose formula is one upon alpha. So therefore, radius of convergence we denote it by r, which is one by alpha. Alpha is one, so one upon one is one. So I got the uh, value of radius of convergence. So the first task is done. Let us go for the second task, that is interval of convergence. Interval of convergence. It is having very simple formula. Minus r comma r. R is one, so let us put minus one comma one. So I got the uh, interval of convergence. Now we have to go for set S. S means set of all real numbers for which the given power series is convergent. So obviously, for all points of interval of convergence, we have the power series is convergent. Simply, we need to discuss convergence at boundary points, which is one and minus one. So let us discuss. Just make a screenshot of it. Then I will go further. So for uh, x is equal to one, okay, we will discuss. For x is equal to one, let us see what will happen. If I put one, we will have series like this, and running from one to infinity. One raised to n is obviously one by n. So basically, it's a p series. You know, p series, series in this form, one upon n raised to p. So p is any uh, integer, getting or any real number. See, uh, 
This is called P series and it is convergent if P greater than 1. Otherwise, it is divergent. So this is a P series with P. Let me mention this is a P series with P is equal to 1. What we uh, what did I say? If P is greater than 1, it is convergent. If P less than or equal to 1, it is not convergent. Here we get P is equal to 1. So therefore, the series is not convergent. Therefore, the series is divergent. Okay. So in this way, uh, for X is equal to 1, we got the series is divergent. Let us go for the second case for X is equal to minus 1. Okay. So second boundary point. We will have the series. Okay. 1 to infinity. It is, uh, I'm putting x is equal to minus 1. So, minus 1 raised to n upon n. Okay. So, just a minute. Let me remove that part. Then we will go further. So, let us expand this series. Okay. I'm going to expand this series. That means I'm going to put n is equal to 1, 2, 3. Then we will have, if by putting n is equal to 1, minus 1. By putting n is equal to 2, plus 1 by 2. Let us put n is equal to 3 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 and so on okay so that means we are getting alternating series since their signs are alternating plus and minus so when we have alternating series we go for Leibniz rule and that rule says this is convergent series so therefore by Leibniz see Leibniz rule that series summation n running from 1 to infinity minus 1 raised to upon n is a convergent series. So that means for x is equal to 1, we get a divergent series and for x is equal to minus 1, we get a convergent series. So therefore, set S will be like this. See, it is convergent now. So 1 should not include it. Minus 1 should be included in a set. Since for x is equal to minus 1, we get a convergent series. And x is equal to 1, we get a divergent series. Okay, so this is required set S. So make a screenshot of it. Then I will go for the second example. See, now we have this second series. For this series also, we have to find radius of convergence, interval of convergence and set S. Okay, so we will follow the same steps. First of all, I will write Cn. So here, Cn. Cn means what? Cn is a multiple of x raised to n. Here the multiple of x raised to n is 5 raised to n. So I have already told you the technique. Uh, to find radius of convergence, we have to formulate getting either we can use this one or second one. So when you have power raised to n, normally we go for the first formula. Otherwise, we go for the second formula. So here we have power raised to n. So I will go for the first formula. Then alpha is equal to c. If you use the second formula, then also you will get an answer. Okay. But I'm using the first formula. Limit n tends to infinity supremum of mod cn raised to 1 by n. So let us put the value of cn. Okay. Supremum of mod phi raised to n raised to 1 by n. So raised to n and raised to 1 by n will get cancelled to each other. So limit n tends to infinity supremum of mod 5 actually there is no need of 5 uh, mod since 5 is a positive real number and the second thing supremum is also not required if you apply the limit then also you will get the same number since we have a constant here so its value is simply 5 let us go further now we are going to find the radius of convergence okay so we got the value of alpha radius of convergence we denote it by r its formula is 1 by alpha, which is 1 by 5, since our alpha is 5. So I got the finally radius of convergence. Now we will go for interval of convergence. So interval of convergence. Having a very simple formula, minus r comma r, r is 1 by 5, so it will be minus 1 by 5, 1 by 5. So finally we got that interval of convergence also. So the last point is S. So S means set of all real numbers for which the power series is convergent. Okay. So obviously for all points of that interval, for interval of convergence, the power series is convergent. Simply we need to discuss the boundary points. 
that means we will discuss the power series is convergent or not for this 1 by 5 as well as for this minus 1 by 5. So let us go for 1 by 5 first. For x is equal to 1 by 5. Let us see what will be our power series. 1 to infinity, 5 raised to n. Let me write properly 5 raised to n into See x raised to n, but now our x is 1 by 5, so we will have 5 raised to n, 1 by 5 raised to n. So 5 raised to n and 1 by 5 raised to n will get cancelled. So n running from 1 to infinity. So we will have simply 1. We have simply 1. That means if you expand the summation, we will have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus and so on. How many times we are adding 1? Infinitely many times. So that's why its value will be infinity. And when we get the sum is infinite, we say the series is divergent. The sum is not finite. So that's why we say the series is divergent. Okay, so let me remove this part. After that, we will go further. Just make a screenshot of it. So let me uh, write the conclusion. Therefore, the series is divergent. Therefore, the series is divergent. Okay, so let us discuss for the second boundary point. For second boundary point is minus 1 by 5, x is equal to minus 1 by 5. Let us see what will happen. I am putting in a series x is equal to minus 1 by 5. So 5 raised to n, here minus 1 by 5 raised to n is equal to summation n running from 1 to infinity. So that 5 raised to n, 5 raised to n will get cancelled again. Simply we will have minus 1 raised to n. If you expand the series, we will have minus 1 plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1. But see, there is no any end point. So that's why its value will always vary between 0 and 1. We will not have the fix any finite value. So that's why we say the series is divergent. So therefore, the series is divergent. Okay, the series is divergent. This is our conclusion. So therefore, S is equal to. So this is interval of convergence. We got for 1 by 5 the series is divergent and for this minus 1 by 5 also the series is divergent. That means for both boundary points we get a divergent series. So obviously the series is convergent only for that interval of convergence. So this is required set S. Okay, so the example is over. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Thank you. See you.